Welcome back to Kimchi Rednecks, where today we're at Dooley's Pets and River Run Dessert Cafe. And why are we here? We're here for a beer pop-up event for Nomadic Brewing Company, sponsored by the Pyeongtaek Craft Beer Society and the Osan Craft Beer Club. And others. All the event proceeds are for Homeward Bound, which is a local non-profit no-kill animal shelter. About a month prior, there was a much bigger beer festival, which had a lot of brewers, but we didn't get to make it to that one. At this event, the highlighted brewer was Nomadic Brewing Company. Since we're known for doing work with South of Soul, and we were there with our YouTube channel and a camera, we were lucky enough to score an interview with Mr. John, the brewer. All right, so hopefully the microphones, the, the uh, saxophones over there don't get us. We are at the Pyeongtaek Craft Beer Society here with Mr. John, who is the brewer for Nomadic Brewing. So, nice to meet you. How nice you doing? Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, thank you for coming. So, what's it like being a craft brewer in Korea? Um, in the brewery itself, it's not too different from being a craft brewer anywhere else, but as soon as you step in the tap room or out of that uh, brewery, it changes really quickly. But uh, I love it. It's great. It's a lot of fun. So, what uh, what do you think would be the number one, like biggest thing you had, to, the biggest hurdle you ran into trying to trying to do a brewery in Korea? Definitely the language barrier. I would say obviously language is going to be a, yeah. a thing. You know, uh, uh, acquiring ingredients. I could uh, see that. And also finding uh, skilled uh, workers such as welders. And that for actually building the brewery because mm -hmm. i had to build my brewery before i could start brewing that's definitely a place to start it yeah yeah so uh definitely building the brewery was a huge challenge uh getting all of the machinery together and and uh you know piece by piece put it together was definitely the hardest thing and a blessing in disguise because i've had to become also more resourceful myself because sometimes it takes less energy to just learn something myself than to try and fumble with language and try to find that that answer from somebody else so yeah. it's, it's I, great I would, yeah. I would have assumed the paperwork would have been a pain because just doing the paperwork to get our resident cards was yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean fortunately uh you know I, i'm married to uh my wonderful wife who happens to be a local so she is korean so she tends to help me out with most of the paperwork so ah. you know bless her for that <laughs> uh, absolutely but yeah um you know, just uh, just here in the moment, just having fun. All right, cool. Yeah. More about nomadic brewing. Like, you're in Jeonju. Yeah, we're in Jeonju. Super traditional Korean city, so it's super raw. Uh, lots of handicrafts, it, a lot of handmade artifacts there. It's uh, it's a beautiful spot. It's got its own vibe, its own character. And uh, and you're in a traditional Hanuk style brew? That's your brewery? Yeah, so we're, we're in a, a Jutek which was actually uh, a word that means that it's an old building, but it's not in the Korean style, but it is an actual old wood A-frame. So it's really beautiful. And then we also have a beer garden that's in a, a modern Hanuk, which is modern Hanuk, which is that, so that Korean type of building with all the modern accommodations that you would have in a house. Like, how do you, how do you decide on flavors and pick which, you're, which direction you're going, how you're going to develop? what you're developing you know obviously i first cover my basics so the basics of beer four ingredients right water malt hops and yeast right so first i, I cover those and then you start to get into more of the specialty hops the specialty malt you can kind of play around a little bit and oh there's a little bit of chocolate there's a little bit of rye you know which is an extract or sorry an adjunct and um you know, those will all provide different kinds of flavors. Then you can go out to your local market and just walk around and see this fruit or see that, you know, herb and, oh, wow, that could be fun as well. So uh, the way I approach it is I just look around, you know, like we live on a beautiful planet that's abundant in all types of uh, beautiful produce. And uh, I just try to see it from that standpoint, you know, and then after I kind of find the ingredients I like, then I'll go back and I'll do all of my German brew calculations and see if I can make something work. Yeah. How long so. have you been brewing for? Oh gosh, uh, over 10 years now. Started with home brewing. Then I went to brewing school in, uh, in Chicago and Germany. Oh, wow. 
Then I was an assistant brewer at uh, a pretty large brewery in America. Then I started a new brewery in Mexico for some investors. And then I jumped around a little bit, went to New York for a little bit. And then, you know, I had married my wife uh, previously, years prior to that, all of that uh, brewing and traveling. And she really missed her family. So I said, well, well, let's come back to Korea. And once we got here, she's like, I like it. I don't want to go back. So I said, oh, fair enough. And we opened up a brewery. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's great, though, because, you know, I'm from Michigan and we get to go back every winter. So, you know, we modeled our brewery around our lifestyle. And I think a lot of times in these days, people model their lives around their work. But I actually wanted to model my work around my life. So I'm really happy about that. And, you know, family is really important to me and uh, being away from them so far away, halfway around the world. It's really nice. So, you know, I get to see them a lot. Oh, so how, do, how deep do you try to get in like regional ingredients? Like what's growing right now or that's yeah. one that's one thing we kind of decided when we decided we liked making brandies is it's easier to get whatever's in season. Yes. And Korea makes some spectacular like fruit for that purpose. Yes. So yes. how does that work on the beer side? Well, and that's a great question because actually where I'm from, Jeonju is Cholobukdo. It's, um, it is mountainous, but west of Jeonju is all flat. So a lot of farming. So mm -hmm. I've, I brew with fresh strawberries. I've brewed with um, fresh peaches and all fresh pears. And it's, it had incredible results. It's unfortunate right now I've just been so busy just keeping up with my classic styles right. that, you know, a lot of those sort of local ingredient beers are very labor intensive. They're, they're labor they're, they're small, small, small batch, run, yeah. small batch. Like you're, you're cutting, you know, you got your cutting board out and you're cutting every single piece of fruit by hand, uh, which provides the best flavor. Um, but very labor intensive. Very labor intensive. And, you know, I have uh, just out of curiosity, I have uh, also dealt with purees that are imported, but the flavor impact is not as intense as when you get it locally, which shouldn't be a surprise. But I'm almost to the point now where, uh, you know, you never say never, but I do love using the local fruits. And I'm more excited to get into other things. One thing that we do, which is really quite special as we brew with uh, organic rice extract hmm. here in Korea. So being American, I was an American brewer, came over here. I was like, okay, I'm making an IPA. It's good. But you know, what can I do here? Like what, what do I have here that I don't have in America? And of course you see rice patties everywhere. Yep. So and short grain rice is incredibly starchy. So yes. So you already know that it's really hard to produce uh, alcohol because a lot of the rice here is almost maybe 90% of the rice in Korea, give or take, is <laughs> grown for food. Right. So I actually had a meeting with a grandmaster of Korean alcohol, and he told me that in order to produce uh, rice, grow rice that is good for producing alcohol, he had to actually buy his own land and farm his own rice. So I was like, oh, I don't want to get that's, into that's, all of that. That's getting into the weeds on the... Yeah. So I was just kind of scratching my head and I wonder if there's some sort of extract I can get. I did my research. Lo and behold, there is there's this beautiful thing called jolchun. Jolchun is a Korean word and it's a name for rice extract. And it dates back to, I don't know, a thousand years hmm. before they were trading with the rest of the world. They don't have sugar cane here. They don't have beets here. So in order to process, to get sweetness, they would actually create sugar from rice. So this is an ancient thing that exists. And I was like, my gosh, all I have to do is take this, bring it into my brewery, because they've already done all of the gelatinization, all the processing of the rice yeah. for me. So all I do is add it. 99% fermentable. Ooh, that sounds good. Very good. Very dry, but also silky smooth. And also the beautiful thing about rice is it increases anti-aging properties in the beer. Longer shelf life. Yeah. Hard to argue with that. And also, you know, I, I like to say I'm a hippie that pays taxes. So <laughs> like supporting organic farming is something cool for me, you know? Yeah, it's kind of fun. 
So yeah, it just, it, you know, it checks a lot of boxes for me. Yeah. So that's the most extensive thing we've done now. You know, it's not as like uh, photogenic of going into the farm and <laughs> plucking it off like, <laughs> yeah. like everyone wants and I do as well. But Everybody loves that Instagram shot, but it doesn't yeah. work well for, for mass production. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I am really looking forward to getting into more fruits as well. Like, and it's really exciting. So we're still a small brew pub. We just focus on community and just, you know, operating in our front and backyard. We don't really distribute at all. We just came out here because, you know, we really appreciate the armed forces, appreciate everything people do, especially on Veterans Day. It's a really great opportunity to say thanks and just spread positive energy, you know? And drink fabulous beer. Well, yeah, yeah. With, <laughs> with fabulous people. It's fabulous beer, man. Yeah. That's amazing. So, do you have a uh, tap room down in your... Yes, sir. I have a brew pub. So I have a brew pub. Brew pub. There we go. And then I also have a beer garden. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I have both, and they're, they're both actually in quite short proximity to one another, about 20 minutes walking between the two. Oh, and cool. It's a beautiful city. Both of them down in Jalado? I'm sorry? So both of them down in what, Jalado? In Jonju, yeah. Jonju. No, you're Why right. am I thinking Jalado? Well, Jolado is actually uh, short for Jolabukdo and Jolanamdo, those areas. Oh, ah, okay. So you're not wrong. It's the region that we're from. I love it when I'm not wrong. <laughs> it's rare, but you know, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right? Yes. 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 So, one last question and we'll let you run. We've held you up long enough. What's your favorite thing that you make? Can I answer it with a non-beer question? Sure. <laughs> Positive energy. Oh, All right. I like that. That's a good answer. I like that one. I yeah. Like that. Yeah. Because that's what I think we do. I think, I think that's what beer does. It just, you know, it takes the edge off and everyone can just, you know, the expression have a beer let's have a beer you know hey. it's it's, it's much beer. more than drinking isn't it no I, I mean really i i love making beer i just do i just beer alone is great and i'm a big fan of beer um obviously you know i i put my my money where my mouth is yeah. right <laughs> i have a brewery but yeah i i do think it creates positive energy so Definitely. yeah all yeah. right been nice talking to you. Thanks for yeah. stopping in and seeing us. Facebook page. I do. Go ahead. No magic. Say, go ahead and call Co. yourself. <laughs> no by Brewing Co. I'm also on the gram. All right. The <laughs> magic Brewing Co. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really nice to meet you guys. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So the hours on this event ran from noon to about 10:30. Needless to say, with that long of a schedule, there were people in and out all day, but they did have games, events, prizes, 5K walks. It's also a pet run, so you were welcome to bring your pet with you for that walk. So as the Kimchi Rednecks, we'd like to thank all the sponsors and attendees because we are always down to support a good pet charity. We're going to do our best to remember to put any relevant social media links in the description below. And here comes a collage of pictures from the event taken by Miss Katie Howell. Thank you.